All right, now we're gonna be talking about organ transplant. So there's many um, organs now that we're able to transplant to help save other people's lives. Heart transplant, I have a friend now that's had two heart transplants through the years. Liver, kidney, eyes. So what happens when uh, somebody passes away and they're brain dead, but they still have some viable organs? How are you gonna keep those organs viable? You need to keep IV fluids going through their body to make sure that those organs still stay moist, viable, uh, until the team gets in there to get the kidney out or the liver or the heart or whatever they're going to use, harvest it, and then get it to the person that they're gonna um, donate that to. So it's a, it's a very fine-tuned machine on how that's done. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go over just a few things with this. So the person that is able to get the transplant prior to that, they have screening done to make sure that you're not gonna go through any hyperacute reaction for rejection, because it's the last thing you want to happen. It's called a PRA screen, so make sure you look that up and understand why. But it's really to um, screen for hyperacute rejection. You don't want to go through all this knowing that you're going to reject the organ. <clears throat> okay, so these people go through the transplant, and you know it's very critical. Uh, the first few days after a transplant because again you're watching for rejection your body's like this is not supposed to be here i don't like this which is why you're on immunosuppressants the rest of your life uh, cyclosporin is one of the oldest ones that's been out there's other ones out there like Celsept among others that i don't know all the names of but cyclosporin's the first one you need to be on that the rest of your life if you start showing signs of rejection let's just say you have a heart transplant and you start becoming winded when you're walking um, that can be a sign of rejection maybe your heart's not pumping as efficiently you need to get in if it is a sign of rejection, they usually will do a cardiac cath, take some biopsies to see if, if it's in rejection. Um, then they will up the immunosuppressants and give you steroids and that kind of thing. So basically immunosuppressants, remember it's making your body, it's fooling your body to think that it's not a foreign thing and that it actually belongs there. So when they, these people go home, they need to watch, monitor themselves. So they need to watch their vital signs. They need to take their temps all the time. And if they have any increase in temp, they need to call the doctor because it's very. these are very fragile patients. Um, <clears throat> so you want to make sure that everything's okay with that. So let's just say, for example, they have a kidney transplant. How are you going to know that it's working? Well, post-kidney transplant, all these people are going to get IV fluids. But let's say they had a kidney transplant it's even more important to watch for urine output. You're gonna watch for urine output for all of these, <clears throat> specifically the heart too, and because we're thinking about perfusion, but we wanna make sure that this new kidney is working and that there's urine being made. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just making sure I have all my notes here. Okay, so, um, also, there's contraindications to getting organ transplants. So there's been some ethical issues regarding having a liver transplant with alcoholism. So everything is tailored to the patient, but there are specific contraindications. It is on your key points, but if somebody has <coughs> a malignancy that's spread, that's metastasized, then that would be more of a contraindication because if it's spread and their life expectancy is low, it's most likely not going to benefit that patient. Um, or if they have chronic respiratory failure or just extensive vascular disease, they might not be a good candidate because you're not gonna get good perfusion to um, even a new organ. <clears throat> They also, um, these people prior, prior to getting organ transplants, and I'm not talking your um, trauma patient, um, these people have to go through a lot of psychosocial um, counseling and make sure that they would be a good candidate to be able to care for themselves also. And that's it on organ transplant.